the American Lung Association is lying about vaping. Hi, I'm Dr. John Oyston. I'm a medical doctor specializing in anesthesiology. When I work in the operating room, I get to see firsthand for myself the damage that cigarette smoking can do to the human body. As a result, for many years, I've been passionate about stopping people from smoking. I've been involved in various issues related to tobacco policy, but for the last couple of years, I've been very interested in the use of e-cigarettes as a way to get people to stop smoking. I was therefore surprised and disappointed when the American Lung Association started telling lies about vaping. For example, on their website, they say, vaping is smoking. And they followed this up on their Twitter account by saying, switching to vaping is not quitting smoking. It's like in George Orwell's book, 1984, where an evil government is spreading propaganda and is telling people that war is peace, freedom is slavery, and ignorance is strength. The American Lung Association is just using pure propaganda. So to set the record straight, smoking is the one where you burn tobacco leaves and you inhale the smoke. That's why it's called smoking. Smoke contains about 7,000 chemicals, including 70 known carcinogens. Smoking kills 480,000 Americans every year. And as I'm sure the American Lung Association knows, over half of those deaths are from lung cancer or respiratory diseases. Vaping, by contrast, is the new disruptive technology which could eliminate tobacco smoking by replacing it with an equally satisfying, cheaper, more convenient, and very much safer alternative. When you vape, you heat an e-liquid to, cre to create an aerosol which is inhaled. Vaping provides smokers with the nicotine that they crave and are addicted to without the carbon monoxide and the tar, which kill 50% of long-term smokers. Vaping legal e-liquids in a standard e-cigarette is very much less harmful than smoking. It's important to note that it was backstreet THC oil, not regular e-liquids, which caused the outbreak of lung disease in the United States. One way to look at the difference between vaping and smoking is to study this YouTube video put out by Public Health England. They created two artificial lungs using bell jars and cotton swabs, and they subjected one to cigarette smoke and another to vape. You can see that after only 16 packs of cigarettes, that bell jar is already beginning to accumulate some nasty tar. And after only a month of smoking or vaping, the smoking lung is full of black tar, whereas the vaping lung just contains a little bit of clear liquid. For a more scientific approach, you could look at this chart in the annual review of public health. The authors determined that cigarettes were the most extremely toxic form of combusted tobacco, and so they gave them a score of 100. On that scale, e-cigarettes come down with a score of four, and they're in the same, much less harmful category as a nicotine patch and nicotine gum. The American Lung Association has a web page about e-cigarettes, but it's full of confusing and misleading information. For example, it begins by describing e-cigarettes as tobacco products. Well, e-cigarettes may contain nicotine, but apart from that, they're completely tobacco free. Even tobacco flavored e-cigarettes don't contain any real tobacco, they just have artificial tobacco flavor in them. It then talks about an epidemic of vaping. An epidemic refers to an increase in the number of cases of a disease. But vaping is not a disease. It might be a bad habit, it may be an unhealthy thing for non-smokers to do, but it's not a disease, so you can't have an epidemic of it. Most puzzlingly of all, it describes their worry about losing another generation to tobacco-caused diseases as a result of e-cigarettes. This makes no sense to me, because e-cigarettes can help smokers quit, and they can prevent tobacco-caused disease. At the bottom of the page, they ask some important questions, but they then go on to give incorrect or misleading answers. So, are e-cigarettes a gateway to youth smoking? No, they're not. Kids who like to experiment are going to experiment both with e-cigarettes and with regular cigarettes. But overall, 
why the use of e-cigarettes is increasing, the use of regular cigarettes by high schools in the United States is continuing to fall. So this suggests that there is no gateway to youth smoking. What are the health consequences to e-cigarette use? It's better health for smokers. So smokers who switch to vaping report better cardiac and respiratory health. And this is backed up by scientific data. And finally, can e-cigarettes help smokers quit? Yes, they can. There was a randomized controlled trial in the New England Journal of Medicine, which showed that smokers who use vaping as a way to quit smoking are 83% more likely to succeed than if they use conventional nicotine replacement therapy. The American Lung Association devotes a whole page to popcorn lung, which they describe as a dangerous risk of flavored e-cigarettes. But in fact, the risk is purely hypothetical. If you check with the Health Canada website, you'll find that there have been no reports of popcorn lung occurring due to vaping. And that's with 42 million people in the world vaping. This is why the Public Health England says that it's their number one myth about vaping, that e-cigarettes will give you popcorn lung. The American Lung Association's mission statement is to save lives by improving lung health and preventing lung disease. And in particular, they want to defeat lung cancer. So you would think they'd be very interested to know that cancer risk from vape is less than 1% of the risk from smoke. Let's do some maths on that. Let's look at a city like Ottawa that has about a million inhabitants. And we'll assume that about 15% of them smoke. So there's 150,000 smokers in the city. About one in six of them will die from lung cancer. That's 25,000 lung cancer deaths due to smoking. If you imagine that 15% of the inhabitants vaped and none of them had ever smoked, and maybe this will happen in the next generation, then there'd only be 250 lung cancer deaths from vaping. This is still too many people dying, and we need to do more to make e-cigarettes even safer. But for a start, when switching avoids 99% of the cases from lung cancer from smoking, you would think it's something that the American Lung Association would support. The American Lung Association says that what we don't know about vaping could hurt or even kill our kids. And here I agree with them. The American Lung Association needs to learn a lot more about vaping. For example, their CEO says that the American Lung Association continues to warn the public not to use e-cigarettes. But scientific research has shown that switching to e-cigarettes could actually save the lives of 6.6 .6 million American smokers. So why is the American Lung Association not telling the truth about vaping? Sometimes in these situations, it's important to follow the money. You have to remember that the American Lung Association is just like a business. It has to pay for its office space. It has over 200 employees that it has to make payroll for. And at the end of the year, it has to balance its books. So where does that money come from? Johnson & Johnson is Big Pharma. They're the makers of Nicorette and other forms of nicotine replacement therapy. And they have a foundation, and their foundation is the largest health charity in the United States. And it funds Many, doc many organizations like the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids and the American Cancer Society, including the American Lung Association. And it's actually one of the larger donors to the American Lung Association. This makes you wonder, what does Johnson & Johnson get in return for all those dollars? Vaping is a threat to the bottom line, not only of big tobacco, but also of big pharma. So for example, since e-cigarettes have, have become available in England, prescriptions for traditional smoking cessation treatments have decreased by over 70%, from 2.5 million in 2008, down to 740,000 in 2018. So it's fair to say that the American Lung Association has a conflict of interest. Vaping is bad business for one of its largest sources of funding. So I suggest that you get your information about vaping from an impartial source, such as Public Health England or Health Canada. So what do they say? Public Health England says e-cigarettes are not risk-free, but they're far less harmful than cigarettes. 
Health Canada says, vaping is less harmful than smoking. Completely replacing cigarette smoking with vaping will reduce your exposure to harmful chemicals. Quitting smoking can be difficult. Evidence suggests that using e-cigarettes is linked to improved rates of success. I've given you a lot of information here, but the conclusion can actually be quite simple. If you don't smoke, you shouldn't start vaping. For non-smokers, vaping is a risk to their health and it gives them nothing of back. If you do smoke, vaping may be a way to help you quit. You should probably try quitting cold turkey or using nicotine patch and gum first, but if those don't work for you, then you should try vaping. Even if you end up vaping long term, it's important to realize that vaping is much less harmful than smoking. Thank you for your attention.